And if I could say something, boy, as you were talking earlier, there's something that just really jumped out at me. And that is that we are living in the most unusual times of our generation. And particularly historically, at least a hundred years since we've had a pandemic of this measure. But the Holy Spirit kept saying this to me, Philip, and I would I would like to share it with you. Yes. The Holy Spirit just kept saying to me, don't be confused by the chaos. Wow. Don't be confused by the chaos. Mm. I think oftentimes people look at chaotic moments and think, where's God? But the Bible opens with a chaotic moment. Genesis yes. 1, 2. It says the earth was without form and void. Yes. You know, it's the Hebrew word uh, tohu vabohu. It literally means useless, uh, unproductive, chaotic. The earth was without form and void. Darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Holy Spirit was hovering. The Holy Spirit is always present, yes. even in the midst of the Perfect. darkest moments, the most chaotic moments of our lives. And here's the deal. Chaos is oftentimes the, the catalyst for creative things. Ooh. And I think we're in a moment of God's creative power being released. Yes. There is a reformation that I think is taking place in the earth. And in that reformation, the church is going to be remissioned. And when it is remissioned, we're going to impact the world and see the harvest that we've never seen in our lifetime. So but because here, here's the deal. Every new day begins in darkness. On our calendar, today oh, began my. one minute after 12 last night. That's correct. In the Jewish calendar, every new day began at sundown, not sun up. The Sabbath began at sundown on That's Friday. That's correct. Yes. Even the book of Genesis says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So everything begins in darkness. Proverbs says it this way, the day of the Lord shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Mm. So there are some people that don't know it is Wednesday until seven o'clock when their alarm goes off. Some, some teenagers didn't know it until 830 <laughs> when they woke up. Sure. There were some people on their way to work today at 4.30 this morning. So your ability to comprehend the new day of the Lord depends on when you wake up to it. And I just believe that God is having people with ears to hear who are awakening to the fact that we've shifted into a new day. It may still be dark, but the new day's already begun. Tremendous. The key is not, is there a new day? The key is, will you recognize it? Because if you recognize it, you can enter into it. You can embrace it. Recognition is, is a primary element for people who operate with discernment. Let me, can I, can I expound on that for a minute? Can I keep going? Yes. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'm, what I'm doing just now is I'm writing a book in my mind. You've, ju you've just given me enough stuff right there. Creation is in the chaos. And I know this, Tony. I know there are people watching just now, pastors watching just now. And everything around you is chaos. The devil tries to use chaos to confuse you, to cause you to get so discouraged that you give up. But if you can understand that God lives, I wrote a book called The Creativity of the Crisis. And sometimes it is the crisis, it is that moment where the faint of heart fall away. But those that are going to press in and press on are the ones that say, no, 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 no. This is not the time to stop. This is the time to go on. Go ahead. Please don't well, stop. Think, think, think about uh, if, if you would have been in Egypt on the night before the deliverance. Can you imagine being a, a, a media reporter trying to explain the last couple of weeks? Uh, oh one day we got frogs everywhere. One day we got flies everywhere. The water in the rivers turning to blood. I mean, the, the news media would, if on a 24 hour cycle, would have been going nuts yeah. because they wouldn't have had any way to explain it. It would have been chaotic. Yeah. But God was birthing a people out of bondage into a place of identity. And it was in the midst of chaos that He gave creative power and redemptive power to bring forth the nation of Israel out of Egypt. 
when when the, the Bible says when the women arrived at the tomb of Jesus, they arrived at daybreak. They arrived at dawn. But what they, they set off in the dark. Yeah. What realized is that something in the dark had already happened because he was not there. He was risen. He had given birth to the new covenant. The creativity of God had been released in the midst of the darkness. So we cannot be confused by the chaos because in this moment, if we get confused by the chaos, we'll be, we'll be prophesying crazy stuff. We'll be, we'll be throwing in the towel and giving up our faith. There's never been a greater moment Philip, for faith to come alive in people. Yeah. Than right. You know, I, I, was, I was taught, you know, I, I, I was influenced in the early days. Brother Hagin influenced my life in a major sure. way. But, you know, all of us are impacted by the fact that seeing is not believing. If you believe, you'll see. Correct? If, if you'll believe it, you can see it. But recently the Lord said to me, he said, how you believe it is how you see it. Oh. It's not just believing is seeing, it's how you believe it, you'll see it. That is, That's some people today are looking at the world as helpless and hopeless because they, they believe somehow that there's a big devil that's overtaken the earth and that God's disappeared. But I'm here to announce to somebody today on Daily Faith Television, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness, and the fullness thereof. thereof. Yes. Never abandoned it to the enemy in any way, shape, or form. So he is still at work and he needs some people in the earth who will operate out of faith and begin to believe according to what he said, that they'll put their confidence in his promises. Yeah. Because watch this. Uh, Isaiah declares this. Isaiah, Isaiah says this. We quote this passage a lot. Isaiah says, behold, I do a new thing. Right. Well, a new thing is not an old thing redressed. A new thing is a new thing. But the next part of that verse says, Behold, I do a new thing. It will spring forth. Actually, the Hebrew and some translations say it this way. It will sprout. In other words, it's a purpose that was in the earth concealed because its time had not yet come. There are things in people that are watching you today, watching us today. There is purposes of God that has been planted in their spirit. And they didn't know when that day would come, but that day's upon them. It's oh, about to sprout. The atmosphere has to change in order for the sprouting to take force, to take, yes. to take, uh, come into being, right? Yes. Behold, I do a new thing. It will spring forth. And then his question was, will you not be aware of it? It must be possible to have been praying for things that happened and you didn't see it. Because Isaiah said, when God starts doing new things in the earth, your ability to have perception of them is going to give you oh the right God. to enter in. Oh if you can't perceive it, you can't receive it. You can't walk into it. Jesus in Luke 19 comes to a city called Jerusalem and said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you like a hen gathered her chicks. But you were unwilling. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave you embanked about. In other words, I'm going to leave you in a place of containment because you did not, what, what the key word, you did not recognize oh my God. your day of visitation. The word visitation there is the Greek word episkopos. It's the day of, of it's the same word we use for bishop. He said, your bishop came by, the one who could adjudicate to you new territory, but you didn't recognize I was in your midst. So therefore you've been left in a place of containment. You've been left to your own circumstances. I'm saying today the Holy Spirit is coming to awaken people to recognize us. You know, cogn the cognitive part of the human nature is yeah. how we reason. So God's saying to the church today, you're going to have to be recognized. You're going to have to be renewed in your mind so that you don't miss me in a divine moment because it didn't look like you expected that's what happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They'd been studying for hundreds of years the Messiah coming. <laughs> he showed up, didn't look like what they thought, and refused him. I think we today, 2021, are at a moment when God is showing up in our midst, but because it's not looking like what we expected, it's very possible our lack of recognition oh will cause God. us to not be able to enter into and receive what it is that God's had for us.
Amazing. When, when the disciples came back, remember Jesus sent them out two by two and they came back and they said, demons are subject to us or whatever. And then Jesus asked them a question. Who, who are the folks saying I am? And they brought back with them, with the good news, they brought back bad news. There's always, there's always a mix. And they said, oh, by the way, Herod's yeah. looking for you. But what happened was when he asked them who they were, who, he, who the people said he were, the, the, Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, etc. And he said, but who say you? Forget the gossip, forget the surrounding noise that you're listening to. Who's, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the moment that Peter had that revelation, at that point, read the scripture, from that point forward, he began to tell them how he must go to Jerusalem and be delivered and crucified. It wasn't until they recognized who he was. And unless we recognize his hand in our circumstance, we can, we can be petrified over stuff that can be the hand of God because sometimes it doesn't always look like the hand of God. It, certainly at the tomb that morning when Mary was there and Jesus was the gardener in her mind, everything that she had known, everything that she had seen with her eyes the day before, it's done, or, 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 or three days before in the crucifixion, she was, she was looking at everything through what she thought she knew. But the moment he said to her, Mary, Everything was realigned in our spirit and she knew that he'd risen from the dead. And I'm, I know watching just now, Tony, there are, there are pastors and you are looking at chaos in your life and the devil is amplifying it because that's his job. He can't hurt you. He can only throw up scenarios that you can either accept or reject. What, what Job feared came upon him. And what the devil does, he can't lay his finger on you, he can't hurt you, but he sure can throw up a screen to make you think that the world's coming to an end. And if you could understand and recognize, that's the thing that come out of the... Unless you recognize God's work in the chaos, you're part of the chaos. And yeah. I want to speak to you today, be still and know that I am God in your circumstance. There's nothing going on right now that God doesn't have control over. He has control over the governments. He has control over your health and this pandemic. God is in control of everything. And in the chaos, He is working things together for our good.